Hi everyone, I'm Jess and welcome back to my course Learn Excel on Mac with Jess. Today I'm so excited to be sharing with you another tutorial on pivot tables. I started this channel with an introduction of a pivot table, as in what exactly is it and what is it used for? I followed that with a video of tips and tricks that would make you more productive. Well today, I'm so excited to be sharing with you more tips and tricks that only few of the pros know. So without further ado, let's get started. For today's exercises, we're going to be leveraging a hypothetical 2021 data that you have on your subscribers and a product or a license that you're selling. We're going to have things like customer name, where they're located, who your sales rep was, how much dollars were brought in for how many number of licenses, as well as start and end dates of when those licenses are valid for. You've also added here the blue column called number of days, and it's simply taking the end date minus the start date to figure out how many number of days the licenses are valid for. For our first exercise, we're gonna go here into a pivot table that summarizes the sales dollars by location. As you can see here, I only have five states, going from California to Washington. But in reality, you may have all 50 states or your customers may be also international. If you have such a long list of locations, what if you wanna take them and make them into a condensed list? For example, what if you wanna take California and Washington and combine them into an area, say called West Coast. The feature that we're going to be using today is called grouping. So the way to do that is to click on California with your mouse and then on your keyboard, hold the command button and with your mouse, click on Washington. So now both California and Washington are highlighted. What you want to do next is right click on your mouse and about halfway down the menu, you're going to see an option called group. Let's click on that. And voila! Now California and Washington are under group 1. And the next step is to go here where the group 1 is, go up to the formula bar and rename it into West Coast. And you're done. And for those of you who love shortcuts, the keyboard keys for these is Command Shift K. Alternatively, if you don't want this to be grouped anymore, what you can do is right click on the West Coast and click on ungroup or the keyboard shortcut is Command Shift J. Now I want to show you another neat trick that we can use grouping for. We're going to go here to the tab number of days. Do you remember in our raw data tab earlier, we had that blue column that calculated the number of days the licenses are valid for, which was taking the end date minus the start date. This table is showing exactly that, the number of days and the counts of customers. What if now somebody asks you, out of your customer base, what is the percentage who buy shorter term licenses? Let's say 60 days or fewer. And how many buy longer term licenses? So anything above 61 days. Well, if you have such a short data, like what I have here, you could easily look at the days that correspond to your question and add them up and divide by nine. But what if you have a more variety of number of days? And I tell you that there's a quick, shorter way to do this with grouping. Before we get to that, let's first convert these counts of customers into percentages since we're looking at the split. So right click anywhere in column B. Down here, look at show values as and choose percentage of grand total. Now, here comes the cool trick. Anywhere in column A, with the number of days, right click with your mouse and once again, choose group. Now, the starting at and the ending at is automatically generated from the data that you have. So in this case, the lowest value is 31 days, ends at 410 days. The by field is where you can set the increments for your ranges. So let's take 30 as an example. Click OK, 
and watch what happens. Now, all of those disparate value points have now been converted into ranges. So now you can see that there is 55% of your customers who have licenses that are valid between 31 and 60 days. Finally, the last thing that I wanna share with you today is how to create a formula within a pivot table. We're gonna go here to the tab sales per license. And here I have a summary of by state, the sales dollars and number of licenses. What if now you're curious to see which of these states has the highest or the lowest sales dollar per license? In the past, you may have done this, which is taking the sales dollar, dividing by number of licenses, and dragging the formula down. Simple, right? It is. But the problem with this method is that once you have more data to add, once you have more states to add to your pivot table and you refresh that table, suddenly your formula here is out of sync. You're gonna be forced to drag and redrag your formula down to follow the pivot table. The solution for this is to create a formula within a pivot table so that whenever you refresh that table, the formula follows and you don't have to drag any formulas down. So before we do that, let's get rid of this. Click anywhere on the pivot table, go up here to pivot table analyze, and about three quarters down, there's a button here called fields, items, and sets. Let's click on that. And once again, on calculated field. So this window is asking you to design your own formulas. It has a name for when you wanna label it, the formula and the fields, which is the column headers from your raw data. Let's change the name here into sales dollar per license to name your formula. And here, let's delete the zero and find the relevant field that you want. In this case, for us, we want a sales dollar, which you can double click or click insert field, space, divide by number of licenses. Let's check that everything looks good. And it does, click on add and click okay. Did you see what happened? Now, Excel has created this formula inside the pivot table that tells it to take the sales dollars and divide it by the number of licenses. Because now this is part of the pivot table itself, whenever you refresh this, the formula will follow automatically. And there you have it, three new pro tips and tricks to add to your toolbox. If you like this video, share the love by giving it thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.